Because it's a different, I mean, I think it was different in the 1990s. Uh, where Washington was more cautious. But something has happened in Washington where they've gotten, like if you look at Milosevic and say he's a wild man dictator going out and slaughtering a lot of people and doing crazy things, he was much more cautious than what Washington is today. And he killed a lot fewer people than Washington has killed in its unnecessary wars against Muslims. So I, I start to think about all these bad things about Milosevic, and as I start to, as I start to articulate them, I, I keep realizing how they're not as bad as what the current government in Washington is doing. And Milosevic has been tried for uh, war, or was tried for war crimes. Yeah, and he deserved to be tried for war crimes. He, you know, he was awful, um, but. Um, you know, I just I don't know if that's ever going to happen to the people that really deserve it, and that's the folks in Washington. But, but, I mean, we don't live in the same America that we lived in in the 1990s. There was a time when America was the country that went in and stopped things like Yugoslavia. This is, this is America, what we do today, that's America being Yugoslavia, the idea of endless wars in foreign countries, killing, especially targeting Muslims, um, that's just straight. That's that's again very similar to Milosevic and the old Serbian Republic inside Yugoslavia. We're treating the world the way Slobodan Milosevic treated the rest of Yugoslavia, except that the Americans have complete hubris. Milosevic didn't have that. He was at least ready to look out there and say, "Hmm, if I do this, I might die, so I won't do this." The Americans don't think that way. The federal, our federal government in America does not think that way. It never crosses their minds that they could ever be the bad guy or that they could ever be called on what they're doing or that there, any, there could be any price. They think there'll never be any price for anything that they're doing. I, I think what brings that to stark reality is watching uh, Obama tear up over the children being killed in, in, the, in that horrible massacre um, in uh, uh, not, you know, back in December, and then the fact that he kills children for a living—that's what he does. He can tear up on the camera, and you know, all of America goes, "Oh, we have such a good president." Uh, but he kills children for a living. He sends with with a, a you know a flick of his finger, he sends a bomb into a whole group of people that might have one bad guy, you know, we're told that there's a bad guy there, and it doesn't matter that there might be numerous families at that same location. He doesn't shed one tear for that. He doesn't blink. He's convinced that, uh, you know, that there's no repercussions at all for his actions, and, and he kills. And it's not just Obama. I mean, it's not just it's not just the Democrats or the, you know, the Republicans or the it's the entire mentality of the government in Washington D.C. It's important to be. It's important to put this sort of thing in context and not judge more harshly than we should. I'm someone who doesn't um, get particularly angry about the the uh, the American involvement in World War II or the American involvement in the Cold War. Um, at least parts of it where you did have situations where, you know, Americans were dropping bombs and children were accidentally dying. But this was part of a process that was supported by the locals, right? I mean, liberating France was generally supported by the people of France, and it was a brief process. It did not last for 10 years. It was war. It was done. It was, it was waged as quickly as it could be waged and finished as quickly as it could be finished within the bounds of political reality, right? That's how they did World War II. That's how they did World War I. That's how the Americans um, uh, fought in Bosnia, too. This, what they do now is something completely different. This is the kind of warfare that Sun Tzu warned against. It's the endless war. Rumbling on, the giant ships drop their cargoes of devastation. You've seen the dramatic liberty arrests in Keene, New Hampshire. Now see 111 reasons why you should move there and reinforce these gutsy activists. Keene's advantages are compelling. For details, visit 
freekeen.com.